An important note before we start. In this video, the term transvestites will be used. It formally described someone who enjoyed dressing as the opposite sex, mostly used for one's assigned male at birth. Nowadays, transvestite is considered derogatory. In the early hours of June 28, 1969, New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay club in Greenwich Village. This raid sparked the first LGBT pride movements and would become a landmark in history for all queer individuals. Back in the 50s to 60s, America was not very welcoming of diverse peoples. LGBT individuals were often discriminated against. Because of this, they would often move to gay bars to express themselves openly without restriction and judgment. Until laws began to crack down on them. In New York State, selling alcoholic beverages to suspected LGBT patrons was illegal. It was soon removed in 1966, but public display of anything deemed homosexual was still illegal. For this reason, police harassment continued within gay bars. Police would barge into gay bars and arrest any cross-dressers by bringing them into the bathrooms and checking their biological sex, arresting them if they were in fact biologically male. This happened on June 28, when police raided the establishment. According to Wikipedia, at 1.20 a.m. on Saturday, June 28, 1969, four plainclothes policemen in dark suits, two patrol officers in uniform, and Detective Charles Smythe and Deputy Inspector Seymour Pine arrived at the Stonewall in double doors and announced, Police. We're taking the place. That day approximately 200 customers were at the club, and double that were a part of the riot. Some of the key people in the Stonewall movements in New York were Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, and Storm DeLarvery. Marsha, pay it no mind, Johnson, born Malcolm Michaels Jr., was a trans woman of color, unafraid of judgment from the public, and was one of the founders of Star, Street Transvestite slash Transgender Action Revolutionaries, to help fellow transgender individuals who have no financial and household permanency, which at the time was sadly an extremely common situation. Sylvia Rivera, born Ray Rivera, was a trans Latina woman, stood out wherever she was, one of Johnson's closest friends during the movement, and one of the founders of Star along with Johnson. Storm DeLarvery, a biracial butch lesbian and a drag king. She was known as the spark that ignited the Stonewall riots and the Rosa Parks of the gay community. DeLarvery was called the spark because of the actions against the police during her arrest on June 28. Eyewitnesses claimed that she was hit over the head with a police baton after complaining her handcuffs were too tight, and according to them.us, she hit the officer back, yelling into the crowd, why don't you guys do something? And motivating the bystanders to fight against police. History.com claims that at least 13 people were successfully arrested that night, including employees and people who violated the state's gender-appropriate clothing statute. Female officers would take suspected cross-dressing patrons into the bathroom to check their sex as mentioned previously. This event would be known to spark early gay pride movements in North America. Before the riots in New York, Marsha P. Johnson struggled to make ends meet. She had to live on the streets, but engaged in becoming a drag queen at night, even making all of her own costumes, mostly made of what she could afford from thrift shops. Marsha quickly became infamous in the LGBT community, earning a title as the drag mother, by helping homeless and struggling LGBT youth find their way. After the riots, Marsha and Sylvia founded Star, continuing Johnson's establishment in the community for helping homeless and poor LGBT youth. In addition to holding meetings and attending demonstrations during this time, Star sought to provide housing for homeless trans and gay youth. Both Rivera and Johnson were often homeless themselves. When they were able to rent a hotel room or an apartment, they would sneak homeless friends into their rooms, sometimes up to 50 at a time. Star was for the street gay people, the street homeless people and anybody that needed help at that time. Marsha and I had always sneaked people into our hotel rooms. Marsha and I decided to get a building. We were trying to get away from the Mafia's control at the bars. Sylvia Rivera, 1998 interview with Leslie Feinberg at Workers World. Sadly, at the age of 46, on July 6, 1992, Marsha's body was found floating in the Hudson River off the West Village Piers. Police initially ruled her death a suicide despite claims from her friends and other members of the local community that she was not suicidal. In 2015, the Marsh P. Johnson Institute was established. Its mission is to defend and protect the human rights of transgender and gender non-conforming communities. Sylvia Rivera passed nearly 10 years later on February 19, 2002 of liver complications. The Sylvia Rivera Law Project was formed about seven months after her death, and served low-income or people of color who are transgender, intersex, and slash or gender non-conforming. Finally, Storm DeLarvery passed from dementia at age 93, 52 years after the riots on May 24, 2014. 
Though she seemingly didn't recognize she was in a nursing home, her memories of her childhood and the Stonewall uprisings remained strong, claims Grace Chu, a writer from After Ellen who was fortunate enough to meet DeLarvery four years before her passing. Now, in this modern day where singular people are held accountable for large movements such as this, common misconceptions have been spread about the movement, resulting in the fact that we may never know for certain what really happened at the Stonewall Inn in 1969. Take chrysanthemum trans words into consideration as well as the events retold, hopefully correctly, it doesn't matter who threw the first brick at Stonewall. To attribute the Stonewall riots to a singular person erases the efforts of countless people who put their lives on the line for LGBT liberation.